What's good, homies and homies? Right now, we got another episode of Ask Beast Mode. Now, before we begin, just in case you happen to be new, because we're getting new subscribers weekly, and I appreciate all the new subscribers, even the trolls. But, this uh, show right here, absolutely no trolling is acceptable. You will be blocked immediately. Every now and then, you talk shit about me, I may or may not block you, depending on how I feel. But I absolutely have zero tolerance for when you disrespect my guests. Okay, because they're the reasons why you're able to have this show. If it wasn't for people, for people sending their shit in, I wouldn't have a show to show you. So let's be respectful, okay? Because this shit is not as easy as it looks. It's not easy to post videos to yourself for thousands of people to see. All right, so let's be respectful. And if you want to be on the show, you have a question, any question at all, rather, your physique, uh, you, your form, you think your form is fucked up, send me a form video, you know, whatever you got question fitness-wise, I'll be happy to help you out. All right, send that to AskBeastMode at Hotmail.com. And I already know you like what you see. You liking the hoodies, man. You, you think you bought that life or you may be about that life. Go to my store at uh, BeastModeJonesCoaching.com. We have, this one's not out yet. It'll be out at the end of the month, which is about the first week of February. But uh, the black ones and the blue ones are already at the store. So go ahead and check them out. And I keep my prices very player made because I feel like good prices will keep you coming back. Now. Let's go ahead and get to the first person. Check right, it out. I'm going to make it short and sweet. My question is, um, I'm cutting, obviously, and in the morning, I can take one of these, one caffeine, five ephedrine, caffeine ephedrine, appetite suppressant. I could take that. I won't be hungry at all throughout the whole day. So I could do that, lose weight, or I'm wondering what's the benefits over that to do your five or six meals a day, what helps you more, and why. Kisses. Thanks. Kisses, Bruno. Give me kisses. Give me a kiss, Bruno. I pay these goddamn bills! Mwah! God damn it. Anyway, guys, first and foremost, let's say thanks for you sending your video. Really appreciate that, my man. Now, let's get to this guy's question. Now, just in case y'all didn't hear what he said or whatever, um, pretty much his question is this. Right now, he's cutting, trying to lose some weight, and uh, he's taking some caffeine and an appetite suppressant. That's supposedly supposed to help you from getting hungry, okay? Now, he wants to know, well, since he's not hungry, wouldn't it be a good idea just not to eat? You know, obviously, you're getting a sh very low calories if you're not eating, so that should really help with his weight loss, right? Why eat five or six times a day when he can just maybe not eat? You know, since he's not hungry anyway, that should speed up his weight loss. Would there be any repercussions behind that? And let me go ahead and say yes, my man. Even though you're cutting, I know this may sound crazy, but you need to eat. Let me explain, okay? People don't understand that. Now, first and foremost, you didn't tell me your goals, so I don't know what your goals are. But I'm assuming since this is a bodybuilding channel and I give bodybuilding advice, you want a somewhat like a bodybuilder. Maybe not like, you know, huge lats or whatever and huge legs, but you want to have a six-pack, be muscular and lean, like a Greek god. You know, who doesn't want that, you know? Why watch a bodybuilding channel if you want to look like a, uh, a marathon runner, all right? Anyway, so pretty much like this, man. Um, there's a difference, a huge difference between... I'll make more videos in this later, so this video won't be too long. But the point I'm trying to make is there's a huge difference between losing some weight and getting lean. Two different. I hate when people say, I want to lose weight. There's a difference. You want to lose weight or do you want to get lean? Because Anybody can lose some fucking weight. It's just, it's just simply losing pounds on the scale. Going from a fucking 16 dress size to an 8 dress size, okay? Uh, getting lean is different. You pretty much want to drop your body fat percentage while keeping your muscle mass, okay? Two different ways to do that, two different approaches. Obviously, you want to lose weight. You can go with these hippie diets you're seeing on these uh, magazines, you know, the liquid diet, the detox diet, the, you know, go a whole day without eating diet and then eat the next day and keep repeating the patterns. There's so many hippie diets out there, the fucking veggie and fruit diet. You know, there's so many ways to lose weight. You know what I'm saying? Let me give you an example of somebody who lost weight and didn't get muscular and lean. Like, remember the guy, some of y'all probably too young to even remember this shit, but Jared, this guy, he, he was a mascot pretty much for Subway. 
You know, he was the real fat guy, and he walked, supposedly, walked the subway, ate subway every motherfucking day, and lost a shitload of weight. Congratulations, that was awesome. However, if you notice, you never seen the guy shirtless, and you can pretty much tell just by looking at the way he walked and his posture and how his clothes fit him, he's not lean and muscular. He lost a shitload of weight, but he's not muscular whatsoever, you know? Probably skinny fat. Probably went from being real fat to skinny fat. That's a pure example of uh, weight loss versus getting lean. And I'm pretty sure we know a lot of women like that, you know, who used to be fat chicks, and they went from being a fat chick to a skinny fat chick, you know what I mean? That's the difference between... Uh, losing weight and getting muscular. When you want to lose weight, you just simply cut calories and just let your body do what it do. But when you want to get lean and muscular, you got it's practically a science. I mean, you got to keep your protein high. You need to go to the gym and stimulate your muscles. That way they can maintain and stay there. I mean, you need to get the right amount of carbs and proteins to feed your body. You need to get your rest. Supplementation is not a must, but it greatly helps. See, let me explain to you why this is so important, okay? A lot of y'all don't realize this, but when you're cutting, whether you're losing weight or trying to get lean, you're in a calorie deficit. Now, I don't want to uh, make the shit sound like more than what it is, but for the use of a better word, you're practically starving yourself. No matter how smart you cut, you are starving yourself. Let me explain why, okay? The only reason why you're losing weight or getting lean is because you're not taking in enough calories to maintain your current body weight. For an example, I was 230 pounds. I was losing about two pounds a week. The reason why is because I was not eating enough food to maintain that 230 pound body, which is practically starvation mode. Now, I'm not in a crazy high amount of a uh, catabolic state, but in a sense, I am in a catabolic state, which is why uh, we incorporate refeeds and cheat meals here and there to keep our metabolism from slowing down. Because if your body feels like you've been deprived so long, you know, it's going to eventually slow down to maintain your weight. Your body, your body likes having body fat. We need body fat. We're not meant to look like the way we look. We're not meant to be huge. We're not meant to be hella lean. We're do the, way, the reason why we're doing this to our body is because we figured out how to manipulate our body through you know, scientific research and whatnot. But we're not meant to be under 10% body fat, guns hugging the sleeves. We're actually defeating the odds, which is why we're like the fucking small minority. There's not very many bodybuilders on the earth, which is why the fitness community is so great. It's like we're a very small population on earth, and we got to sit together, man. But the uh, point I'm trying to make is, you know, when you're cutting... You're practically starving yourself, okay? You're not eating enough food to maintain your current body weight, which is why, you know, we incorporate the refeeds, the cheat days here and there to keep our metabolism boosted. And it's good for our mind state, all right? Now, eating protein, you know, getting a little bit of fats, getting some carbs to help push through your workouts, that's going to help maintain your muscle. Let me explain, okay? When you're in starvation mode, it doesn't matter if you got, like I said, your body doesn't care if you're buff or not. We're not meant to be buff and huge anyway. It's going to take whatever it can get. It's going to tap into your BCAAs, your branch chain amino acids, through your bloodstream, through your muscles. It's going to suck up out your glycogen. You pretty much need to make sure you're getting protein to spare your muscle, okay? And like I said, you have to go to the gym and lift. Lift as heavy as you possibly can. As a natural lifter, performance is everything. You know, you don't want to be lifting 225 for 10 reps when you're bulking, and then when you start cutting, you can barely hit it twice. Obviously, you're not going to maintain all your chest mass. So, you need some carbs. You need at least enough carbs to help you push through those workouts. You know what I mean? So, it makes no sense not to eat. Now, like I said, I have no idea what your goals are, but I'm just going to assume, since you're watching me, you want to be leading muscular. So, I hope that helps you out, man. Yes. Uh, not eating will help you lose weight, but you probably just be some skinny fat motherfucker. You want to be lean and muscular and shit, maybe have some veins in your forearms. You need to eat, but stay in a calorie deficit while you eat. You know what I'm saying? And still get to the gym and lift some weights. Anyway, hope I didn't talk too long, guys. And like I said, I'll do some more videos on the difference between uh, losing weight versus getting lean. And I'll post more cutting advice videos. Obviously, this is cutting season for a lot of people. That whole New Year's resolution shit going around. So, definitely to keep those videos coming. Alright. So, anyway, hope that was helpful. Let's get on to the next person. What's going on, Chris? Enough love for all the videos and all that, all the motivation. My name is Billy D'Souza. I'm 21. I've been lifting for about... 
four years now, but only two years like tracking macros and, and training properly. The other two years I was on like, some hippie bullshit like one set on each machine, going around the gym and shit. Some bullshit. But um, I've got some muscle imbalances on in my back. So my first question is, have you got any more tips for muscle imbalancing other than doing like single arm movements? And my second one is, uh, what's your take on like calories? Like, some people say, as long as you hit just your protein, like the carbs and fat doesn't matter. As long as you hit your calories, like, what's your take on that? Like you don't need to worry about carbs and fat. I was just wondering what your opinion is. But yeah, man. Cheers. All right, my brother. First and foremost, thank you for sending your video in. Now let's get to his questions, okay? His first question was about muscle imbalances. He uh, pretty much wants to know what can he do to fix his muscle imbalances. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and tell you uh, two ways muscle imbalances can occur. All right, one is you're doing too many bilateral movements. And what I mean by that is too much barbell work. Okay, obviously, some of us are left-handed, some of us are right-handed. You know what I mean? And you're going to have a dominant side. If you obviously keep using barbells all the time, uh, that dominant side is always going to be dominant, and that weak side is never going to be able to fend for itself. Um, it's, that's what we have dumbbells and hammer strength equipment for. You have bilateral movements, which is mostly barbell work, you know, when you're using two limbs at the same time. And then you have unilateral movements when you're using like dumbbells and hammer strength, you know, and single arm cables. Shit, when you're using each limb individually, that's going to ensure you minimize muscle imbalances. But he already knows that. I think he said something about that. Now, another way to get muscle imbalances is just simply your form is shit. Obviously, if you're going to the gym, right? For an example, let's say you're curling. And, uh, you know, you're rocking back and forth and shit like that. You can definitely get a good arm workout. I've seen many people get their arms big and they have the shittiest form ever because regardless of using good form or not, uh, a, you're still, a percentage of that work is still going to be arms. Yes, a percentage of that work is going to be back. A percentage is going to be shoulder. But for the most part, you're still working biceps. Let's say you're curling 100 pounds and you're swinging. You're still probably getting about 60 pounds of that on your biceps. It'll probably make more sense to just drop the 60 pounds and just do the shit, right? But whatever. Some people want to eagle lift, you know, whatever. Who gives a fuck? Train how you want. Part I'm trying to make is form, man. You got to make sure you're training with proper form. Make sure you're controlling the weight at all times. Not a whole bunch of swinging and jerking because when you're doing a lot of swinging and jerking, you know, the, the tension is going to shift. And you're probably shifting the tension to your dominant side. So, two things. Work on your fucking form. Maybe lighten the weight a little bit. Work on you getting your contractions. Make sure you're filling the muscle. Make sure you're making sweet, sweet love to the muscles. And like I said, do more unilateral work, man. That's what the dumbbells and hammer strength and cable is for. You know what I mean? We're not powerlifters here. You know what I mean? This is not a powerlifting channel. You know, you want to be a powerlifter? Don't take my advice because I'm not a powerlifter. I give advice on how to get your physique looking as perfect as possible. And that's how you fix those weak points. Throw in more unilateral movements and make sure your form is crisp. It's okay to cheat every now and then. We're not perfect. Sometimes I go to the gym and I'm like, fuck form today. I just want to feel some heavy ass fucking weight. But the majority of my training is good quality reps. Just like my diet. I have cheats on my diet. But the majority of my diet is good quality food. All right? Now, let's get to a second question about um, fats and carbs. Uh, pretty much a friend of his or whoever said it doesn't matter about protein, fats, and carbs. It's all about the calories. And now I'm going to say that's somewhat true, but it's somewhat not. Okay? Uh, let's say for an example you're cutting. Okay? Obviously, you need to be in a calorie deficit. So first and foremost, protein needs to be high. Now, depending on how much you weigh, how lean you are, how hard you train, that's going to d depend on how much fucking protein you get. But let's just say, for an example, you're getting 225 grams of protein, and you're only left with, I don't know, about 1,500 calories. Well, you got 1,500 calories. You already got your protein out the way. All right, you got 1,500 calories left. Okay, now, you got some carbs, and you got some fats. Obviously, you can't get all of it from fats, and you can't get all of it from carbs. So you're going to have to split that shit up. All right? Some people diet better. I've seen this myself through several clients. You know what I mean? Some people actually lose weight easier through a higher fat, lower carb diet. I've actually seen this myself. Couldn't believe this shit. I've had one client that I've had this guy on uh, low calories. His fats were low, his carbs were high. 
You know what I mean? And it works for the majority of people that's active, but for some reason, just couldn't lose his weight. So what I did was I raised his fat by 30 grams. We went from 40 grams of fat to like 70 grams of fat, dropped his carbs, and he was losing weight like a motherfucker. We threw in refeeds like once every five or six days just to keep from flattening out because he would flatten out real quick, obviously, because of the low carbs. But the point I'm trying to make is, yes, it's all about the calories. At the end of the day, we're in a calorie deficit. We should lose weight, but some people just genetically are more uh, carb sensitive than others and that's what trial and error comes from you know we have to figure it out on our own either you hire a coach or you figure it out on your own some people uh, work better with carb cycling obviously due to carb sensitivity some people just work better on having you know uh, cycling their carbs and carb cycling depends on your split obviously if you're somebody who trains legs twice a week and you train six days a week you know you're utilizing carbs a lot better than somebody who's training legs once a week and going to the gym and just working their bicep and triceps, having arm days and shit. I mean, it, it depends on your fucking genetics, uh, if you're carb sensitive, your split, uh, the kind of job you have. Obviously, if you're a mailman walking door to door delivering packages and then you're some guy who works at an office just, just typing all day, you're not burning as many calories. So a lot of these things go into account when you know determining your macros. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is, yes, man, at the end of the day, man, it's all about the calories. Just make sure protein comes first. Rather, you're cutting or rather you're bulking. You need to determine what your protein is going to be. And then once you're left with the carbs and once you're left with the fats, you determine how many you're going to get of each. You know, me personally, I'm more of a moderate fat kind of guy. I love my peanut butter. I love my olive oil. I love, our, I love guacamole and chipotle. So... I'm not really big on carbs. I can diet on 150 grams of carbs and be good as long as I can get me some fats, you know. But some people are different. Some people don't really care much for fats. They love bread. They love pasta. They love rice. So, you know, it all comes down to you. You're going to have to play around with those on your own. But your friend is practically right, man. It's all about the calories. But there are some special cases where some people got a carb cycle and some people are just going to diet better on higher fats and low carbs, all right? So anyway... Hope that helps you out, my man. And like I said, guys, this is the end of the show. Don't forget, go to BeastModeJonesCoaching.com if you want to check out some of that apparel, some coaching, some meal plans. We got a lot of great things on there. And uh, you want to be on the show, ask BeastMode at Hotmail.com. Let's see some form check videos. You know, you if, you if you're not sure if you're squatting right, benching right, whatever, send that video in. Let us check you out. Uh, submit questions, any questions at all. Critique your physique, whatever questions you may have, send that shit in. Let's keep this show going. I love this show. Anyway, don't forget to like my shit, comment, subscribe. Holla back at your boy.